Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. John here from What's Spitting. List week here rages on. We've got two more videos for y'all this week. We're doing top singles today, which can only mean one thing, and that is that top albums is out tomorrow. You're not going to want to miss it. And if you missed my top five EPs of the year, go back and check it out. There's some good stuff on there. So for those of y'all who have not watched one of my top singles videos in the past, I want to lay a few ground rules. First of all, one single per artist. I've always done this. I just feel like it makes things fair all around, even though it makes things more complicated in the long run for me. And two, I stuck with just singles. There's a lot of instances in these tracks where there's tracks on the album that I preferred more than the singles. But still, we're keeping it just as singles to keep things accurate. And third of all, most importantly, remember folks, this is all opinion, trust me. Uh, it's not gonna be the same as your list. It almost never is. Anywho, moving right along, just wanna give a couple of quick honorable mentions just because this was really hard for me to do this year. Last year, you know, my list was much shorter than I was working with narrowing it down to my top 50. I had over 150 singles that I truly, truly loved this year and thought that could make this list. I narrowed it down to 50. A couple of quick honorable mentions. I want to give a shout out to Weezer's All My Favorite Songs. I wanted to put this on this list so badly. It is so catchy. It is just a really great classy piece of piano, rock, and Baroque pop. It's very quirky as well. Also, loved the title track from the new Show Me The Body EP, Survive. Easily one of the grimiest and most disgusting hardcore punk tracks I've heard all year. Also, want to give a shout out to the blistering and iteration from uh, The Armed, one of the best singles leading up to that album, one of the best tracks on that album. It still excites me. It's just so vibrant and colorful and just so hard hitting. Also, want to give a shout out to Vince Staples with Are You With That? Uh, very quiet, sort of reserved, but gloomy and dark uh, trap banger. And also want to give a quick shout out to Hideaway from Waves. Honestly, I could have said any of the singles leading up to this album. I thought Sinking Feeling was really good. I thought Hideaway was really good. Um, honestly, a lot of the singles on the album really ripped. Seemed about the album, though. That kind of sucked. That being said, guys, it's time to get into our top 50 singles of the year. So, kicking things off at number 50, it is easily my favorite track on the new Teenage Wrist album, uh, Silver Spoon. Honestly, maybe some of the deeper cuts were better. I liked High Again, that's a really great one, but still, this was a great reminder of what Teenage Wrist can do. It's a great blend of shoegaze and modern emo, it has a great riff as well. At number 49, it's Rostam with Forerunner. While I did not care for this album, everything about this track rubbed me the right way between the hazy production and the strum feet, as well as his vocals. At number 48, one of the weirdest and most over-the-top and insane new tracks on the King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard album LW. I'm talking about Plora. And at number 47, Real Estate got back into my good graces with the title track from their latest EP, Half a Human. At number 46, it is the soulful, sort of psychic Delic, a fantastic opener to the new St. Vincent album, Pay Your Way in Pain. And at number 45, one of the biggest rippers from the new Tribulation album, uh, Funeral Pyre. I honestly almost went with Leviathans here, but something about Funeral Pyre, just that driving rip, that immensely emotional verse, just it's so good. It's such a great gothic tinged metal single. At 44, Porches put out one of their best singles in years with Back 3 School. And at 43, uh, Jack Antonoff reminds me what he can do when he puts his foot down and makes a truly fantastic pop single with uh, Stop Making This Hurt. At 42, we have Aesop Rock and Blockhead getting rid of my reservations and making sure that I'm ready for their new album Garbology with their fantastic cut Jazz Hands. And at 41, Taylor Swift reminds us that her stint into the indie folk and indie world in general is not just a a flash in the pan uh, as she teams up with Big Red Machine on Renegade. At number 40, Danny Brown and Brock Hampton bring the fire with Buzz Cut, one of my favorite hip-hop singles of the year. Love that beat, love that feature from Danny. It is awesome. And at number 39, a folk single that just really made me feel good, it's True Love by Howdy. At number 38, it's The War on Drugs featuring Lucius with I Don't Live Here Anymore. And at number 37, I wish I could adore this album, but I just found like there were too many tracks on here that got a little too weird. It's Parquet Chords with Walking at a Downtown Pace. At number 36, 
Spirit of the Beehive, There's Nothing You Can't Do. I love this track. I love the production. I love the hazy vocals. I love the sampling here. So much of this album is so good. And at number 35, it's Painted Shrines with the very haunting but inviting Gone. At number 34, it's Django. Django with a track that really caught me off guard and made me super pumped for their new album, Glowing in the Dark. It's Spirals. And at number 33, this was one of the tracks on here that was hardest to place. I knew I wanted a Lana Del Rey single on this list at some point. At one point, I really wanted White Dress. And on one other point, I really have been super, super into Tulsa Jesus Freak lately. However, at the end of the day, I went with Arcadia. Her vocal performance on this track is ridiculous. Shout out to Lada. She has come such a long way. At number 32, it is Eve's Tumor with Jackie from the Asymptomatic World EP. And at number 31, it is one of the best metal tracks of the year. Hands down, it is Gojira with Born for One Thing. At number 30, I, I feel like Pale Waves have always, you know, warmed up to me with their singles and kind of cooled down with me when it comes to the album. But every time they drop an album, there's a single on it that I truly love. And at number 30, I could not say no to Easy this year. This this is just a really gigantic, I don't know, sort of throwback 90s pop tune. But it's so good, though. At 29, uh, one of the nicest surprises from this new series of albums with Arca, that would be the reworking of Sia's Born Yesterday. This is a pop anthem from Arca, but a weirdo pop one that sounds oddly timeless, but also straight out of the future. It is so catchy, but so weird. It sounds so good. At number 28, uh, it's Shame with Snow Day, uh, one of the more progressive tracks from their new post-punk album, Drink Tank Punk. Uh, this is not the album that I expected from Shame. This is not a track that I expected to hear from them either. It is much more forward-thinking. It is a thinking man's post-punk tune. It's a long one, too. It's over five minutes. But the way it progresses, the way it comes in waves, is just so awesome. And I love the production on this track. It's just so hard. At number 27, talk about surprises, it would be uh, Gate Creeper with Emptiness. Uh, it, of all the things that I expected to like this year, uh, Gate Creeper putting out an 11 minute plus blackened doom metal sort of funeral dirge is not one of them, uh, but it is one of the most emotionally jarring and sorrowful metal moments I've heard all year. It is absolutely indescribable. And at number 26, shout outs to Rebecca Black. She came back with this really fantastic Rebecca Black was here EP, has sort of cemented herself in this hyper pop, outsider pop world that we have going on right now. And none of the tracks were better than Girlfriend. This track goes freaking hard, which leads me to my top 25 singles for the year. At number 25, it's Death from Above 1979 with a track that I played almost more than any other rock single this year. Uh, it's One Plus One. This track is just such a reminder of what Death from Above 1979 can do. The riff here is just so hard. The groove on this track is so fantastic. This sounds like an old, dirty, grimy single from the band. Even though I didn't end up loving the album, this track alone, you know, makes it worth listening. At number 24, the, the hype is real on Silk Sonic. And yes, I, I love this whole album, but I still think that Leave the Door Open is the best track on here between Bruno's falsettos on this track and the amount of swagger coming out of Anderson Pack's performance. This is such an obviously great soul track with a seriously old school vibe to it. It's just ear can. At number 23, Marissa Nadler with Couldn't Have Done the Killing, uh, one of the most intense visually tracks on her new album, Path Through the Clouds. Uh, her whole new album does a really great job of, you know, bringing the world of true crime to her very monotone world of atmospheric dream folk. And this track was absolutely a standout. Her visual lyrics here, the production here, just how immensely cinematic it is, it's a must listen. On number 22, uh, it's Panopticon with Moth Eaten Soul. Uh, yeah, some of the later tracks on this album I warmed up to a lot more than Moth Eaten Soul, but still, 
easily one of the best metal singles of the year. It is crushing. It is throttling. It makes me feel like I'm, I don't know, galloping through a woods in the winter on horseback, just going into battle. My God, is it epic. And it is just so intense. The solos are great. The songwriting is fantastic, too. It's just a great track all around. At number 21, it is Viagra Boys, featuring Amy Taylor from Emile and the Snippers with their cover of John Prine's In Spite of Ourselves. Uh, one of the weirdest combinations I've heard all year, but one that just has grown on me more and more and more. This is such a fantastic cover. The chemistry that these people have together on this track is so good. And if you told me that in 2021 I was going to hear a post-punk band uh, featuring a punk rocker from Australia covering a country classic in a cowpunk fashion, uh, I really, honest to God, would not have believed you. But honestly, it's freaking awesome. One of the best covers I've heard in a while. And at number 20, Torres, Don't Go Putting Wishes in My Head. Not only is this one of the better tracks on this album, this is one of the better tracks Torres ever wrote. I love the guitar-driven riff. I love her super sweet and romantic vocals. And it is just so catchy. It's so catchy. At number 19, uh, a track that I could not say no to if I wanted to, and that would be one from the new Snail Mail album. It's the title track, Valentine. Honestly, Leading up to this album, I was not into tracks like Ben Franklin. I just, I, I wasn't. They weren't exciting me because I always thought Lindsay's real strengths were just like in her guitar playing and making simple old school guitar driven indie tracks. But then I heard this title track, Valentine, and God, she's so good at writing a big, catchy hook. This track is just so driven. It is just so emotional. I love her lyrics and just how heartbroken they are on here. This is just a great indie rock track. At number 18, Banger Alert, Tyler the Creator with Lumberjack. Easily one of my favorite hip-hop singles of the year. This really takes things back a peg as far as Tyler's career goes. It reminds you just how intense and how much of a monster he is on the microphone. But, you know, in a little bit more of a tasteful way, because let's be honest, Albums like Goblin haven't exactly aged well, but this is just a monstrously intense banger of a track. Probably my favorite hip-hop single of the year. At least as far as like a traditional hip-hop track goes, because at number 17, it's Injury Reserve with Knees. Uh, first of all, I have to say, like, if you haven't listened to the new Injury Reserve album, go, go do yourself a favor and listen to that bad boy, because that is raising the bar on experimental hip-hop in 2021. But Knees is a fantastic, broken-down, bluesy, hazy, psychedelic, intense, emotional masterpiece in experimental hip-hop, and one that I would not miss, people. From experimental hip-hop to blackened shoegaze, black gaze, if you will, at number 16, uh, one from the new Harakiri for the Sky album. Honestly, as far as a metal single goes, I don't think I've listened to one more this year. It's I'm All About the Dusk. Leading up to this album, I thought every single was just getting better and better and better. And then I heard this one. It's one of the most epic, truly emotional, and progressive black metal tracks I've heard in a long time time. At number 15, it is the progressive, semi-spiritual uh, journey from Bad Bad Not Good that is Signal from the Noise. Uh, this is a plus nine minute jazz track that, if you are even mildly interested in jazz, I would say this is a no-brainer and something that you need to listen to yesterday. Uh, it is awesome the way that this track starts so somber and quiet and picks up into one of the most progressive and exciting Bad Bad Not Good tracks I've heard since like BB NG2. Uh, it's awesome. Number 14, Miss Faye Webster. Easily one of the best sort of alternative country tracks that I've heard all year. Indie rock, whatever you want to call it. Singer, songwriter, too. Uh, better distractions. Oh my god. Whenever I'm even the slightest bit anxious or stressed or mad, I just put this track on and it just takes all my worries away. I love the slide guitar here. I love her vocal performances. I love the harmonies at the chorus. This track just makes me feel 
Oh, so good. And at number 13, it is The Weather Station with Atlantic. I almost put Robert here. I almost put Parking Lot here. Uh, there were some other ones I was considering as well, but this is the one that I've come to back the most. Not only does it have the thought-provoking lyrics and the charming vocals that the rest of this album does, as well as the throwback singer-songwriter vibe, not only does it have all that, but it's easily the most whimsical and fleshed-out track here. Also, instrumentally, just Gorgeous, just absolutely stunning. At number 12, a track that has me excited as hell for 2022, it's from Miss Charlie XCX. It's a single from her album that's coming out in February. It's good ones. This track is just so simple for her. It's nothing wildly outside the box. You know, production's pretty safe for her, but it is just so classy and so catchy and so obvious. It's so good. And at number 11 is Caro Caro Benito with one from Civilization 2. It is the absolute banger that is The Princess and the Clock. Uh, since I first heard this track, I've just been addicted to it between the sort of playful and cheery and quirky verses and this booming, absolutely awesome, throttling chorus that just goes so freaking hard. It's just so exciting from Caro Caro Benito. It just shows that they're always constantly trying something new and that's enough for me. Which leads me to my top 10 and it was not easy to put this together. But starting us off at number 10, it's one of the best punk tracks I've heard all year. It's Emil in the Sniffers with Hurts. It's short, it's sweet, but it is so exciting. It is so pummeling it is so catchy in its own way it just has this infectious energy to it that makes you just want to play it over and over and over again and number nine it's the track that made me want to review the new manchester orchestra album uh it's bedhead one of the best indie rock tracks that i've heard all year i love the throwback production here i love the sort of upbeat riff to it and you love the synths on this as well and the ridiculously emotional performances which is something i've always enjoyed about manchester orchestra even though i've not been as in to them over the years as many people have but still this is an awesome single all around and easily one of the better rock tracks i've heard all year uh one of the most exciting and artsy and strange post-punk tracks that i have heard all year but it's one that has infinite puzzles and it's just so riveting in so many different ways and it just i feel like i still haven't taken it all in at the end of the day and that alone is awesome it's dry cleaning it's scratch card lanyard the intense verbose performances the sort of tortured delivery everything about this track is just seemingly endless i feel like i'm walking down this endless corridor of post-punk with a million different hallways and just i can go down any one at any time it just seems like it's just infinitely rewarding and at number seven Go ahead and judge me. I dare you to go ahead and judge me. But I am not immune to Olivia Rodrigo, and I am not immune at all to Good For You. It's easily one of the catchiest sort of pop rock tunes I've heard all year. At number six, it's Shannon and the Clamps with Midnight One. Uh, one of the most infectious and instantaneous tracks I've heard in rock all year. I love the sort of bouncing beat that we get here. I love the psychedelic production. I love the soulful performances. I love the lyrics here. It's just so catchy and it's just a lot of fun as well. It just really sticks with you at the end of the day and it really does a great job of summing up the sounds of their new album, Year of the Spider. At number five, one of the most passionate and emotionally intense art pop tracks of the year. I'm talking about Half Wave with Parties Over. Uh, my God, Mandy's performance on this track is ridiculous. And you know, if you see her live, it just, it's, just, it's a track that means so much to her. It, and it's just so obvious. And for years, I knew that she had this big voice in art pop. And I've just been waiting for it to just explode. We get that here. And it is incredible. Easily, as far as the artsier side of pop, one of my favorite performances of the year. At number four, another tough one. This could have been a number of singles on this album. Uh, that's how good this of a punk album this was. Uh, it's Turnstile. It's a Fly Again. Uh, I'm very tempted to put on Mystery or Wild World or a, a good number of other tracks on this album because every single single leading up to this album excited the hell out of me. And that's how good of a hardcore album it is. But I thought Fly Again was just easily the catchiest track here. That chorus is just so thunderous. That riff when it kicks in is so fantastic. I love the production here as well. Oh, so good. At number three, uh, a pop tune that just did not escape me 
all year. Uh, and you know what? I wasn't looking that forward to this album, but it ended up becoming, you know, one of my favorite pop albums of the year. Uh, I'm talking about one from the new Marina album, Ancient Dreams in a Modern Land. I think Venus Flytrap is the best track there and one of the best pop singles I've heard all year. Chorus goes hard. The video is awesome. Everything about this track is just everything that's good about that album. Like everything that I didn't like about the Man's World track, which I thought was okay, but I thought that her message came across better on tracks like Venus Flytrap. And it does. It's one of the catchiest tracks that Marina has wrote in years. It's just an awesome electro pop tune. At number two, um, easily the most instantaneous track I heard all year. Ever since I heard this bass riff come in and just this joyous, jubileous chorus, you should say. Uh, you know, honestly, it just really stuck with me. Uh, it's easily the catchiest pop tune I heard all year. Uh, Japanese Breakfast, be sweet. It's just so obviously a great tune. It is written so sweetly. It is written with so much heart. It is instantaneous. It is catchy. It's kind of perfect all around. Which leads me to uh, my favorite track of the year. My favorite number one single of the year. And this is going to catch you off guard, I feel like. Uh, but it's coming from an album that I've listened to a lot this year. And this is a single that I just kept coming back to because the production is awesome. The groove goes so freaking hard. And I'm a big boy and I'm biking groove. That's something special. The songwriting is fantastic. The performances are so manic and intense and in your face. And the intensity of this track, especially towards the end, is one of the most ridiculous things I've heard all year. And I'm talking about Squid and Martha Sky Murray with Narrator from Squid's album Bright Green Field. Whether it be the 8 minute plus post-punk journey or the four minute abridged version there's something about this track it starts slow it starts grooving and it doesn't stop grooving until it becomes this hellish maniacal punk track by the end one of the most intense things i've heard all year it is just so catchy as well and honestly for the quirkier and artsier side of post-punk this is pretty easy to digest as well. And it's just, it's easily the track that I've listened to the most this year. I know that's a curveball, but I'm here for the curveballs. And it's how I'm feeling. This has been my top 50 singles of the year. I want to hear about some of your favorite tracks down below. Tune in tomorrow for my top 20 albums of the year. And as always, have a great day, guys.